Welcome Hello. back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Um, so uh, we did another episode beforehand, so you can go watch that if you want. And it was about um, like cool facts and history of the 1950s. Mm-hmm. And so on that episode, we asked if you wanted us to do a whole series on like all the decades and facts and history about those. And you guys said you did uh, want that. And somebody asked if we could do the 1920s next. So Great that's era. Where, yeah, Great so, time frame. Right. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, we've got a lot of cool history here that uh, we're going to share with you because um, you guys wanted to see this next. So that's what we're doing. Yes. So welcome to the 1920s. Yeah, let's go back in time. All right. We look exactly okay. the same, but this is still the 1920s. <laughs> right. We um, actually are here. Right somehow now. we existed back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so the first one is... Now, you might be wondering, why was it called the Roaring Twenties? <gasps> why? Because that's something I've heard a long time, and I didn't really know what it meant. So, pretty much it was called that um, because it was an era of prosperity and wild activity... Which could be seen by the massive numbers of, like, cars and, you know, because there was usually just horses and buggies, and then this was a time where there was a lot more um, cars and They just kind of took off. They did. Um, and they just filled the crowded cities, and there were also lots of factories and industries, and also the sound of jazz music in the speakeasies and radio. So... Lots going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Right. All right, so the next one are cloche hats. Mm-hmm. They were very popular uh, in the Roaring Twenties. Um, so they are like a close-fitting, bell-shaped sort of women's hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were invented by a hat maker. Uh, her name was Caroline Rabot in 1908. Uh, the name originated from the French word cloche, which means bell. Well, I Cause, guess. Because it was kind of like a bell hat. Yeah, cloche, yeah. cloche, however you say it, cloche, cloche, something like that. Yeah. Yes, so it kind of looked like a bell. So, um, story time. Story time about Story us. time, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, um, we always like dressing up for Halloween in, like, a lot of different costumes. We always yeah. entered in our Halloween parade. We made, like, homemade ones for yeah. years. We would, yeah. like, always go to the thrift stores with a pick, a, pick a character or something right. and go do that. So, the one year, I was Nancy Drew. Mm-hmm. And I was the original Nancy Drew. A lot right. of people think of her as the one in the 1960s with that kind of a look. But the original one was in 1930, which right. is like the end of the 20s. Exactly. So she yeah. was still kind of similar. Um, and I had a sign. This is my <laughs> she sign. Did. She had I was her. the original Nancy it's, Drew. It's very old and obviously it was rained on. It but... was raining because <laughs> it always rains on Halloween and the <laughs> Halloween parade. Right. So, um, I had a costume that was just like her. I was holding a clock. It was actually a very, very rough experience. Really? Because during the parade, it was raining. Mm. I had to not only hold this sign, I had a stick on it. I also was holding a, like, really heavy clock. <laughs> and I had this giant flashlight. So, I'm like this for the entire parade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think I did end up winning. I think you did, yeah. This is my number. I guess it was 2007. Yeah. Did I win? Um, win? Yeah, this is from the newspaper. Wait. Okay, Nathaniel Taylor won for sixth grade. That's our brother, so I guess he won that. Yes, and Laura Taylor, myself, won for fifth grade. So we got two. One, two that year. (laughs) We typically ended up winning. (laughs) We put so much effort into our costumes. Yeah. Um, So the next one is uh, about the first motion picture with sound. Now, you know silent film. It was really popular in the early 1900s, but then the 20s came, and in 1927, um, people first saw... The first uh, picture with um, with sound. And it was called The Jazz Singer. Now, a funny uh, or a cool thing about this is that um, the famous musical slash movie called Singing in the Rain was actually, the storyline was based on the time frame of when The Jazz Singer came out. Mm-hmm. And pretty much it's about um, a silent film production company and its cast and they're kind of trying to make their own movie with sound after the jazz singer came out and it's kind of just a funny um musical about all the mishaps that they have like the main um in that production company the main uh female cast member she was very good at silent acting but her voice was awful (laughs) so they had to like do voiceovers and stuff like that so that's the plot and it's formed around um, the jazz singer. So, and if you've never seen Singing in the Rain, 
What are you doing with yeah, your life? Go where watch are you? Singing in the Rain. How have you not seen it? I mean, okay? we love that I mean, movie. okay, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you have seen it. Yeah. But if you haven't, go watch it right now. Stop right this now. episode. Yeah. Finish watching it later, but go watch it right now. It's been out right since 1952. Now. It's time that you go see it. Yes. Um, but yeah, we love that one. We watched, that was like one of the movies we watched like every week. For like I while. remember watching it all the time, mm-hmm. especially for some reason mm-hmm. when um, we were sick. It was like the movie to watch when you're sick. Yeah. I don't know. Why. It's a good, it feel good movie. It is. Yeah. All right, so we can't talk about the 1920s without talking about dance. Oh yes, dance, dance. Yes. So jazz music was developed in the United States and became very popular in the 1920s. And it inspired many of the famous dances in the 1920s. All the dance moves like the Charleston, Everybody knows the that. Black Bottom, yeah. the Shimmy, Turkey Trot, Cakewalk, Bunny Hop, Lindy Hop, and American Tango. Um, the older dances such as the Waltz and Foxtrot were also still popular. Yeah, right. So they did a lot of dancing. I actually take ballroom dance. She does. Uh-huh. She's very good at it. Interestingly enough. Yeah. Well, I like it. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on this list, I have done the American Tango. I have done the Foxtrot and the Waltz, and I've done a little bit of the Charleston. Not a whole yeah. lot. So, I think a lot of these, like the Cakewalk and Bunny Hop, well, I think they, they might still do the Lindy Hop, but they don't do a lot of these anymore. No, they don't. Those are And they're not like dances. an entire dance. It's like that's a dance step, I think. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so the next one is cartoons. Now, in the 1920s, Walt Disney made um, the famous, of course, Red Mouse in... Or not Red Mouse. Um, mouse in the Red Pants, um, which is Mickey Mouse. Who doesn't know Mickey Mouse? Um, so he appeared in the 1928 short film Steamboat Willie, which he used to be known as that. Um, and it was the first cartoon with synchronized sound. Yeah. Yeah. We will play it a lot now because everyone's like nostalgia at the beginning of new Disney movies. They'll put Steamboat Willie. They will, yeah. All right. Uh, so mannequins also became popular during the 1920s. Um, it served as a way to store for store customers to learn how to mix and match clothes um, as well as accessories because maybe they didn't know how to do that. Uh, this was both a great way for the stores to market their wares as well as customers to learn about fashion mm-hmm. and also to get really creeped out when there's a bunch of mannequins and it's dark and you're closing the store and one of them comes to life. Right. Uh, like the Twilight episode. There's the one with that woman who eventually yeah, that, that finds out forever. she's a mannequin. I mean, I always thought mannequins were creepy, but that yeah. episode has ruined them for me totally. Yeah, it's, like, it's I, awful. If I'm in a room with a mannequin, I have to be staring at it the whole time because it might it might move. It might move, yeah, and that's that's not good. That can't happen. No. Okay, so the next one is the Macy's Day Parade, which we've talked a little bit about in our Thanksgiving episodes. Um, but the first Macy's Day Parade was held on November 27th, 1924. Um, it was actually called the Macy's Christmas Parade at the time. We had a quiz on this, and I don't think you got it right. I don't. You, that was the one you made a trick question. <laughs> did I? Yes, because what did I do? You, you made some answer. Go back and watch it, people. Prove me right. You made some answer that was like, It was a trick question, I remember, because I knew the answer, but the way you phrased it made me get it wrong. Actually, I think I remember that. I guess I did kind of make that too hard. Well, anyways, um, it was called the Macy's Christmas Parade at the time, and instead of the floaty balloons that you see today, there was actually live animals that they borrowed from the zoo for a day. They just had animals, like elephants. (laughs) That would never be allowed anymore. (laughs) No, (laughs) just take them out of the zoo. Just come bring them down to the lions, um, New York City. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But that's a fun fact because even, I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up in a few weeks, so. It is. Can't believe that. It's getting here. Yeah. All right. The Winter Olympics. They uh, started on January 25th, 1924. A lot happened in 1924. A lot did. Um, It was held at Chamonix in the French Alps, and it included sports like the ski jump, bobsled, as well as 12 other events. That's a pretty small yeah. Olympics compared to now. <laughs> yeah. It's like hundreds. It wouldn't have lasted very long. Like and I think I learned that it wasn't really a big deal. Like, at that time, nobody really cared. I mean, some people watched well, it, but it wasn't as yeah, big of a deal as Yeah, some now. random people like, hey, let's make an event. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah. guys, who wants to come? Yeah, and apparently... The 12 events included, like, they were, um, like, a mix of the same events, because 
like really there was only six six sports <laughs> yeah. in the whole olympics well because you year. have to get a whole area ready i mean think about how much work it is like all the places they have to make for the sledding and right skiing and i bet they everything. back then i mean a lot of it's artificial now like not all of it but a lot of it is i bet back then they had to find like actual places to go yeah. to yeah okay so the next one is credit so um at first a buyer had to have cash like only cash to buy an entire car. There was no getting it on credit or anything. Um, and a lot of times banks were unwilling to lend money for something that was difficult to seize if the borrower stopped making payments. Because it wasn't like a house, this could be moved and then they could not find you. Um, so in 1919, General Motors and DuPont introduced the idea of buying a car on credit. Uh, but instead of getting financing through a bank, um, they formed the General Motors Acceptance Corporation. And then by 1926, 75% of all car buyers were using credit to purchase cars instead of just cash. And we still are today. We are. Yep. Um, so the next one is money. Yep. $100 from the 1920s would be equivalent to $1,023 in today's money. <laughs> what? Can I go back there and, like, get a dollar or some money there and then just come back? And I'd be rich. It wouldn't matter. Well, <laughs> because it would be the same bill, but it's just not worth as yeah. much. Well, I mean, that I That actually blows my mind. The whole, like, currency and how much it actually means and, like, how much one country is worth more than another. Who figures yeah. that out? I mean, I'm sure there's a way that it happens, but yeah. it, I don't understand right. it. It's, it's crazy because, like things back then that's why nothing cost anything back then because money was just worth so much yeah and yeah. like you think well then just print more money but it doesn't work that way for no. some reason like we don't know the details but it does you can't just it doesn't work that way um uh so the next one is uh children's toys now some of the toys um from the roaring 20s were teddy bears um velocipede um it was an early form of, bi of a bicycle. Uh, tinker toys, gy a gyroscope. Uh, it was a kind of a device with a wheel um, or a disc mounted so that it could spin rapidly. It was kind of like for, I don't know why it was for kids, but it was kind of for like direction and stuff like that. Um, and magic lanterns, which is an, an early form of a movie projector, but it was really just to see pictures. So like, think about that kids. There was no iPads or computers or any kind of technology. That's all they had. They just had teddy bears and stuff. Like, they had teddy bear pictures imagination. and some random compass thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was exciting to kids back then. Like, a lot of imagination. All right, and last but not least, we have cars. So at the start of the decade, cars were very basic, but still a vast improvement over a horse and buggy. Uh, most of the early cars were open tours, meaning they sat four or more people and they did not have glass windows. Right. But it didn't take long before they were enclosed to give more comfort, like, eh, when it rains. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the 1920s, cars had advanced enough in terms of style, speed, and beauty with high levels of comfort and safety. Still not really as safe as today's cars. No. Not even close. Yeah. No. <laughs> um... Cars with features like windows with safety glass, radios, and car heating were very new to cars in the 1920s. Yeah. So yeah, I always thought about that. Like, now we get mad because we have to get in our car and we have to wait five minutes for it to warm up. They had like, wind blowing they, in their face yeah. in like January. Even if it was enclosed, it wasn't warming up. No. Like, yeah. if you had to drive to work, you weren't getting warm. Right. And I'm, also cars back then, like... Were they much... They were much faster than, like, a horse and buggy. They could not go very fast. No. no. They really were, but it... I don't know. Maybe people felt better. I don't know. But they were in a motorized Well, thing. I mean, think about how much work it is to get the horse and buggy ready. Like, you gotta go get the horse. You gotta put the thing on. You gotta right. attach it to the buggy. You gotta make sure... You gotta take care of go. the horse. And yeah. once you get true. there, you have to make sure somebody takes care of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it is more convenient. Um, so those were our, uh, cool facts and history, um, and a little bit of history from the, the 1940s. No, uh, 1920s. 1940s. Okay. Uh, okay, apparently the 1940s. 20s! Uh, Why would you say 1940? <laughs> she messed me up! I think 
I she did a mind she's trick. Been reading too long. <laughs> it's the 1920s, <sighs> just so you know. Okay. That this is not the 40s. It wasn't my fault. She messed me no. up. No. Oh, it's okay. You know what? We, we understand. Got proof. We understand we proof. that this happens. It's fine. Okay? Just. Okay. It's the 20s, not the 40s. Yeah. Not the one who started that. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, again, hope you enjoyed on this episode. Learned some new things about the 1920s. And now it is time for the news. <laughs> Hello, and thanks for tuning in. Today we'd like to make a public service announcement that no news is good news. Now it is time for the Taylor Trip. Would I rather have to cry at everything or laugh at everything? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Because I want to say laugh, but then it's like, you can't what if laugh someone as... tells you that their mom just died? Yeah. You right. can't laugh at that. <laughs> yeah. that no. I mean, it's depend- yeah. it would depend on the cry. Like, if you could just have a couple of tears roll down your face. I yeah, mean, you could just say you have an eye problem. Yeah, constantly, though, you'd be getting people, are you okay? Is Do you need something? Are you, are you okay? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this yeah. is a hard question. I mean, I laugh way more than I cry, which is a good thing. But yeah. there are really a lot of situations where you shouldn't be laughing. Right. Definitely. All right, I'm going to go with cry because I could probably hide it better than laughing. Okay. Uh, mine is I have to do some ASMR. So let's, let's do this thing. So welcome to today's episode, everyone. I'd like to, uh, do some, some sound right now. I'd like to clink a glass. Oh, this, that, that sounds so soothing. Like some, some tea in your warm, warm, cozy kitchen in this cold. they talk though in the trying to be very I, soothing we've gone over this before i can't stand asmr i can't either can't it's it. um it's it's aggravating it's like nails it on a chalkboard to hear it's s- like talk normally yeah and, and 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 to hear that it's not so much like for me the quiet voices it's when they do things that you hear in the mic really loudly that you shouldn't normally it just makes me cringe it's just like oh, oh stop stop <laughs> 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 Um, but again, hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, make sure to give this video a like and a comment. If you'd be so kind to subscribe. And after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell so you get all of our videos in your notifications box. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. If you'd Thank like you. to subscribe down here, you can subscribe. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. If you'd like to watch a, a previous episode, you can click up here. And on if you'd like to watch a random Christmas, episode, you can click down here. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs>